Our next stop on our junket takes us to speaker number two, which is Sharon. Her evaluator is Anthony. Anthony, can you please tell us what you're looking for in your evaluation? Yes, Mr. Toastmaster. Uh, Sharon is doing a sign <coughs> one from the storytelling manual, The Folk Tale. And the objectives are to tell a folk tale that is entertaining and enjoyable for a specific age group, to use vivid imagery and voice to enhance the tale, and timing for this is seven to nine minutes. Thank you, Anthony. Before any of our ancestors were here, there were people here in Canada. They were the first Canadians. And their descendants, one of whom is our friend Mark Bernard, or Sergeant Bernard, he's a proud Métis Canadian, married Sharon. And Sharon has a story to tell us tonight. Her background is she's a medicine woman. She took two years of training to be a medicine woman. She's been adopted into the Assiniboia Sioux tribe. And she's going to give us a speech tonight, a story, Gusabi and the Wind Eagle. Please welcome Sharon Bernard. did much of their teaching through legends and folklore. So I've chosen this one because I think it has an interesting message. Long ago, Gluskaby lived with his grandmother, Woodchuck, in a small lodge by the big water. And one day when he was out walking, he noticed that there were many ducks on the water. So he thought this would be a great time to hunt. He went into the lodge, grabbed his bow and arrow, made sure he had everything to fish as well, got into his canoe, and started paddling out in the lake. But the wind came up and blew Gluskaby right back to the shore. He would have none of it. Kiyo wajine yo ho hey ho. Kiyo wajine, kiyo wajine. Four times he tried, and four times he failed. Each time the wind blew him right back to shore. He grabbed his canoe, threw it up onto the shore, and stomped into the lodge, even though there was a stick across the door. And that meant that whoever was inside was working and did not want to be disturbed. Grandmother, what is the cause of wind? Grandmother looked up from her work. It be. Why do you want to know? And he answered, as children do everywhere, because, Gluskaby, I know you. And I know that if I answer this question, there will be trouble. But you are so stubborn that I know that you will continue to ask until you get the answer. I will tell you. There is a wind eagle at the top of the peak. And when he lifts his wings and flaps them, there is wind. Ah, uh, hey, grandmother. And uh, where would I find this wind eagle? Scotty, I know there will be trouble if I answer this question. But I will tell you, because you are stubborn, and I know you will keep on asking until you get the answer. If you follow the wind and face into it, you will eventually come to the peak where the wind eagle sits. Luskaby was ready to find the wind eagle. So he left the lodge and faced into the wind and began to walk. As he walked across the fields, 
and through the forest, it was very windy, and the wind seemed to be getting stronger. He was so stubborn, he didn't stop. <coughs> he continued until he hit the foothills and started going in through the hills and the valleys, and still the wind grew stronger and stronger. When at last he came to where the tree line ended, the wind became so strong that Gluskabi had his moccasins blow right off. That didn't stop him for a minute. He kept right on walking, head into the wind, and soon his shirt blew off. He didn't stop walking. He kept right on. And then the wind blew all of his clothes off, and he was completely naked. And still he didn't stop. He started climbing now because he was at the mountain. And the wind blew his hair right off his head. He still didn't stop. And as he kept climbing, the wind took his eyebrows. And still he didn't stop. But as he came to the top of the cliff where the wind eagle sat, he could see him flapping his wings. Grandfather! He yelled. The wind eagle stopped flapping his wings. Yes? Who calls me grandfather? It is I, Gluskabi. I I've come to tell you what a wonderful job you do creating the wind. And the wind eagle puffed up his chest so proudly. You mean like this? And Gluskabi nearly blew right off the cliff. He grabbed a boulder at the last moment and said, Grandfather! Yes? Grandfather, you do such a great job of creating the wind, but I think that if you were to be on that peak over there, you would be much better at it. And Deepo thought for a moment, you may be right, but how would I get from here to there? Hmm. I have an idea, Grandfather. He took his carrying strap that he had managed to hold on to and wrapped it round and round the wind eagle until his wings were tight at his side. He picked him up and started walking towards the other peak. And, but as he was walking, there was a crevice, and he dropped him in upside down and wedged right into the crevice. Time to hunt ducks, said Glooskabee, and off he went towards the lodge, leaving Grandfather in the crevice. As he walked down, climbed down, went walking through the foothills, very still. And as he continued through the forest and over the fields, it became very hot and he started to sweat. When he finally got back to his own lodge, his hair had grown back. He was happy to be home. He put on new clothing and new moccasins, grabbed his bow and arrow, and headed out with his canoe to go and hunt ducks. As he did, it was so hot, he was sweaty, and he found it hard to breathe. He looked around him, and the water was dirty, and there was so much foam that he could hardly paddle through it. He turned his canoe around and paddled back to shore. Put his canoe up on the shore, went right into the lodge. Grandmother, why is it so hot? And Grandmother looked up at him. What have you done? You've replied like children everywhere. Nothing. Muscovy, 
finally Glooskabe told her what he had done, what he had done with the wind eagle. Grandmother just shook her head. Glooskabe, the creator put the eagle on the peak because we need wind. The wind keeps the air cool and fresh. It moves the water so the water stays clean and fresh. It brings the clouds so that we have rain. Without the wind, this is a terrible life for us, for our children and our children's children. But hey, grandmother. Kimoji, hmm, I understand. And off he went out of the lodge, facing into the direction where the wind had once come. He walked across through the fields and down through the valleys and finally came to the tree line. He was very hot and very uncomfortable. He climbed once again up to the peak and started walking to where he knew he had left the wind eagle. He looked in the crevice and there was the wind eagle, still upside down. Uh, Grant, uh, uncle, <laughs> uncle, what are you doing down there? Oh, Ruskabi, an ugly, hairless boy threw me down here, and I can't get out, and I am very uncomfortable. Oh, I'll get you out, Grandfather. And he climbed down into the hole, grabbed the wind eagle, unwound the rope, and sat him back where he once had stood. <sighs> Grandfather. Uncle, I, I understand that sometimes there needs to be wind, and sometimes it is good to be still. Yes, grandson, it is so. And that is why sometimes there is wind, and sometimes it is still to this very day. Mr. Joseph <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Mr. Timer, could you give me one minute while everybody makes their notes? Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters, and especially Sharon. Uh, I was thinking about mastering the basics, so I feel like you have mastered the basics of storytelling. So I'll go to some fine points. But first, what you did very well. First basic, plot. The plot was beautiful. I could follow through. I was not bored. There was no point at which I was bored. Um, right off the bat, your appearance told the story of moccasins, the medallion, the feather. I knew this was going to be a Native American story, and I really liked that. And the plot worked for me. All the dips, ups, and downs, very nice. Speaking of plot, you had an advanced tactic in there. Three times you used, ki yo wajine. The second time I was thinking, ah, oh, it's not complete, it's not complete. Then at the end, you brought it in and I said, oh, beautiful. Tied it in very nicely. Um, your ex yeah, exclamations, ah, hey, grandfather. So all the vocal writing in there definitely made it real for me. I love that you said big water. Very Native American expression. We don't use that in English, and that just popped out for me. Very nicely done. Dialogue is another basic you mastered. Between the grandmother and uh, Gluskabi, his voice was different from hers, which is something you mentioned. The voice was very clearly grandmother's voice. And when the eagle was talking, it was a proud eagle. He puffed up his chest, very proud. I like that a lot. And then the... What I want to talk about in terms of fine points that I would recommend you work on in that sense is um, you, you had a part where you talked about peering into the crevice, and I like it. So give me an idea. How about if you tried something where when you're telling us something, use your eyes to make us look at a certain place. So instead of saying he peered, disconnect from the audience and peer. That way we're forced to kind of, oh, is there something over there kind of thing, kind of peer in there, draw us more into that. Uh, it calls for more vivid language. And I want to share an idea with us here. And I think it's useful to all of us. I was at a, at a writing a writing seminar and the speaker talked about the tyranny of the eye. That writers tend to talk a lot about visuals. So they describe scenes, but they don't talk about other senses. So my advice to you, Sharon, which is just really a higher level step because this is so well done. I just want to suggest to you, maybe when Gruskabi was going through the forest, 
give us some sensations that he felt, not just what he saw. Maybe his feet were so climbing he could feel the moccasins smudge against his heels. So we he can feel, not just see. Or maybe he could smell the green grass. As it, you know, something like that. Give us more senses to really immerse us in that story. But as far as uh, the project is concerned, mission accomplished. And I hope to see you speak very soon in the future. Mr. General Development. Okay.